Let's see. <laughs> All right, Riley, what is up? Hi. Sorry, I just popped in like. Boom. Immediately. Yep. No, 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 no worry. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for taking the time today. Yeah. So sick. Yeah, of course. How you doing? Appreciate it. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm in uh, Vancouver right now, and it's very gloomy and gross outside. So okay. it's a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> I, I hate I hate overcast weather, and I've been in cold overcast weather for the last like two months straight. And I God. hate it. Where are you located? Michigan. Yeah, it's and it's the same. So it, it's wild because like we are getting into the time of it's supposed to be spring, and we have like a stretch of four or five days really sunny nice warm weather and then all of a sudden like we have two to four inches of snow again so it's like this weird like seasonal depression thing i never really thought was a thing until like you it's get a, a few days of sunshine and then all of a sudden it's like oh it's i hate everything yeah it's absolutely <laughs> a thing i i was just filming in I was supposed to be filming in michigan we actually ended up filming in indiana oh shit in fremont oh, really indiana. okay and um we got caught in an ice storm and oh, I didn't, I didn't know that that was a thing. I'm from Southern <laughs> California, so I was like, "What the fuck is a nice?" <laughs> and it like, it postponed filming for three days. It was the worst thing. And I was like, "Why would anyone? Why would anyone choose to live? Why would anyone choose to live here?" Like, I don't get it. You know, it's uh, I mean, it's interesting because like. I think uh, I, I think once you get past the like the like when I was younger, we had a lot of really deep snow, like big snowstorms, like you know Chicago, especially uh, the Midwest. I mean, we would get hit with some pretty nasty stuff. And yeah. I think the past few years it's been a little bit better, but like yeah, then comes come along things like ice storms, and it's like what where am I? Like am I, I'm not. I don't feel like I'm even on Earth anymore. No, <laughs> it was it was terrifying. Now, did that like add anything, you know, different as far as, you know, that, that role? I mean, obviously I don't want to dig into that because that's a, you know, an upcoming project, but yeah. um, did that add mm -hmm. anything like any extra difficulty to, it was supposed to be, you know, summertime shooting or was there anything? No. So luckily, um, luckily it's like very much supposed to take place on like this desolate farmhouse in the winter and like it, we're supposed to be absolutely fucking miserable um <laughs> and a lot of the stuff better inspiration <laughs> and, and a lot of the stuff that we shot is outside um so we look miserable so it like it it definitely helped um yeah it was great and it also just like looks beautiful on camera though like the yeah the lens that they were shooting on like just picked up all the like stunning like bluish grayish hues it looks beautiful sure wow yeah. that's awesome anyway all right so so yeah 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 no i, I and i i love hearing that you know it's just the the, the fun little things into all of those things um yeah. you know i i really wanted to start beforehand you know as yourself being a fan uh, of film and just kind of you know putting the the characteristic of you know a fan's point of view on things and where your interest earlier on starts as far as different films or maybe certain actors or actresses that really kind of started resonating your interest into more than just something being up on a screen. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I will forever uh, attribute my, like my very first interest um, to anything and everything Natalie Portman did. She like, oh, man. she's my, I just think, everything she touches is gold. Um, and as a kid, I remember, and I know that not everyone loves these Star Wars installments, but mm. episode one, two, and three, um, Padme Amidala was my like idol. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, whatever she doing, whatever she's doing, I want to do that. Um, and then, yeah, like, I think I, I have a really, I always have, um, I get FOMO really easily. And I'm like, if I see someone doing something that I want to do, I'm like, well, I, why am I not doing that? And <laughs> when I was a kid, seeing people that were my age in films, I like it oh, yeah. infuriated me that like, I wasn't doing that because it looks like they're having so much mm -hmm. fun. So like, um, I remember watching Matilda and- Okay. I I remember it's like such a silly thing, but like I just remember seeing Matilda, and we were like 
the same age, and I just thought that it looked really, really fun. And then Anastasia, I know that's a cartoon, but um, Anastasia was my absolute favorite character of all time, and I was just like, I don't know, I, I was just like taken by female stories, I don't know. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. did anything with like the earlier cartoons, like were you introduced to like the Muppets or any of like the kind of stop motion stuff where you're just like, how are they even doing this? Like, how is this something that's becoming? Yeah, but I think I don't, um, I think I didn't like process that that was a thing until I was older. Like at, when I was younger, I just kind of like, I, I was a very gullible child and so like i would watch anything and just think that like that was real like i remember watching cartoons as a kid and being like oh i'll be her friend like <laughs> that's uh, like i'll go i'll find her and I'll, I'll be her friend so seeing anything that was like like you know like the artistry that goes into stop motion or puppeteering or whatever um i didn't realize that that wasn't real until i was probably like 10 and then I I was yeah. like, oh, that's, people are, are making this. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, I just wanted to be their friend. Yeah. <laughs> I did. And I just wanted to like go on the adventures with them. And I remember watching, um, watching like Anna, or, um, oh, I was thinking about this earlier, Indiana Jones. Like oh, I, adventure stories are so, so exciting and they're meant to be. And I remember as a kid watching Indiana Jones just being like, like, if they're going on this grand adventure, like, surely I can. I, like, I, yeah, I, I think just like any sort of like big adventure story really hooked me in. Yeah. I'm I thinking of, I... of all of these now. I'm like, I'm thinking <laughs> of like, like, um, E.T. That was yes. one with, with kids yes. that were, I was like obsessed with Drew Barrymore in that movie when I was a kid and similar yeah. thing. I was like, well, she gets to do this. I want an alien friend. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that, that like really answers your question, but I no, just feel great. like, um, like watching things like that made me, I guess it really just came from a, a, a an unwavering confidence in myself that like <laughs> no I'll, I'll be able to do that that's fine <laughs> yeah, okay. now was this something like did you ever you know mention to your parents you know something maybe not you know like as far as oh i'm gonna find an alien and be a best friend you know kind of like drew barrymore here but was that something to where like you ever like told your parents like i'm gonna have to pack up my stuff and i'm gonna have to leave on this adventure to go find treasure like they do in the goonies yeah, yeah. I, um, <laughs> definitely, uh, I, yeah, I basically was just like, cause growing up, I always like, um, I have an older sister and an older brother, but there's, they were like moved out very early. And so I was the youngest and I was essentially an only child. So like, I had a lot of time to be in my room and like creating these, worlds by myself um and my mom let me draw on my walls which to this oh, day wow. i think is the coolest thing ever um and so i remember i created this big like monster portal with colored pencils on my wall and there was this door and i drew like i love drawing and painting and um i drew like monster fingers coming out of this like big keyhole and oh, um and that was always really like like i loved playing in my room by myself because i was just always like genuinely like going on adventures <laughs> in there um and then yeah and then i uh it came to a point where my sister actually i was i was playing in my room by myself so many times that my sister was concerned and she made me little i told her about this imaginary world that i had and all of the little pe people in it were purple blobs with these like really big eyes and so my sister actually made little purple like blob toys with big eyes and she handed them to me and she was like you need things to play with like you're in here too much. <laughs> like, play, like play with these. something physical yeah yeah um <laughs> 
And I'm pretty sure that I was like, yeah, great, thanks. And then just like put them to the side. And continue <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it got to a point where like, I, I was just like constantly going on these like grand adventures in my head. And then um, my mom asked me if I wanted to do theater or something because I was obviously interested okay. in that. Um, and then, yeah, I did theater for years and years and years. Um, and then packed up and moved to LA when I was 17. Man, that so now hard. your introduction to theater, was that through school then? <laughs> God, no. No. Oh my God, no. No, okay. I, I was way too um, like embarrassed to do it in front of my school colleagues. Okay. I, like, I was like, fuck that. <laughs> like, I, no, one, <laughs> no one is watching that. And so I did community theater and oh wow okay yeah and like i think that if i could go, go back and do it differently i'd be like just do school theater you idiot yeah but um yeah I, I i did community theater and it was with a lot of like old pe people and um i i loved it so much and i like formed really really strong friendships and bonds and I'd go to school and I like, I played sports in school. So I was like, no, I don't, I don't do theater. That's what, what's that? Like, that's stupid. Um, and then I had this like double life and I'd get out of school and like go to my theater practice. And, um, I don't know who I was kidding though. Like pretending I was like some jock. Everyone knew that I was, I was like off with the fairies. I don't know. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, like within your first experiences, what were, you know, those first times of like really having to break out of your shell, you know, something coming up, you know, where it's like, oh my God, I'm going to just melt in front of these people. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, you know, because I mean, I was, I was involved in, in theater uh, mm. for a couple of years through school. And it was one of those things where it was just like, that was not me. I was not somebody to get up and talk in front of people. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, I was always approachable and, you know, like had, you know, friends of all of, you know, the different groups and everything, but I wasn't trying to be up in front of people singing or anything like that. And so like, <laughs> those are the moments where it's like, it really breaks you, you know, and I, I'm just kind of interested in where, you know, some of those might have been for you. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I really like had that. I I feel like I had the opposite where like, I was doing such a disservice to myself by like not fully owning that mm -hmm. and like trying, I, I, yeah, I feel like I had kind of the opposite. Cause like, um, I was a little bit of a hyper kid and like I would get up during dinner and like force, force my mom to like watch me perform. <laughs> if, if, if my kid was doing that, I'd be like, sit the fuck down. That's so annoying. <laughs> but my mom, <laughs> watched and um she was like my first audience and she was she was always like mm -hmm, that's great <laughs> and um yeah I think like I think as a young person like dulling that down uh or feeling mm -hmm. like I was gonna like get made fun of if I if I like fully embraced that um maybe that was it so I think like with that maybe when I got to college really was the first time that I felt like the shackles kind of come off and me like with a bunch of people that had a similar goal mm -hmm. and I didn't realize like how like tight of a hold I had on myself of being like no you can do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> like if you if you feel like telling this story or uh joining this circus of sorts you know, um, do it. And I think that, yeah, I think that kids, especially when you have a, a supportive parent, like, yeah, I just, I feel bad when kids don't like fully tap into like what they truly want or like what really makes them happy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because I was just scared of what my friends were going to say. Yeah. Not yeah, you know, and it, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it is it is certainly interesting, you know, and, and, and myself, you know, I guess, you know, kind of along those lines, my boy plays football, but then he also is in band and kind of mm. recently was mentioned, like, uh, I don't know if I want to be in band anymore, because like, 
a lot of the kids are kind of dorky and kind of this and this. And, yeah. and I'm sitting here trying to tell him the same thing, but it was like, I quit band right around when American Pie came out. And people were like, this is not cool. Like, you don't want to be, for whatever reason also, because now that I think about it, I feel like that movie made band a little bit more cool. Uh, totally. But some, yeah. somehow it didn't. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting here trying to tell him that. And, you know, it, it, it was just not like boiling through. He's like, uh, I think I'm, I'm over it too. So, yeah. I, you know, the, 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 the parental, you know, as far as your mom and having that, you know, and having that patience too, and, you know, being like, this is very cool. Uh, you know, a, a slight enablement, but it's awesome because it also, you know, helped you as far as, you know, pushing yourself into like, nope, I'm going to do that. I watched Milo and Otis and I want to be right. a dog now maybe and just run off. And <laughs> yeah, no, that, honestly, yeah, is the thing. It's either that, it's either like very good supportive energy or it's like, like a psychotic confidence <laughs> where I was I, like, I'll, I'll do this fucking watch. I'll do it. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, and now I'm just too stubborn to not do it, so. <laughs> what What about, you know, as far as, uh, you know, growing up in your local movie theater or, or a video rental, does, does anything come to mind as far as something maybe unique to these spots to you or, uh, you know, just something that now have traveled, uh, seeing different places, and you're like, man, this place doesn't have this type of thing? Like, how does this not exist? Yeah, mine's, like, less of a thing. Mine's a person. We, um... Uh, I grew up in the Inland Empire in Southern California, um, and our local movie theater was in Redlands, California. Uh, they're known for their oranges. Um, and the movie theater we were at is this Krikorian movie theater, and there was this old man named Al. And he worked seven days a week. He was there every single day. And he was there to, to greet everyone, and he was the door opener. And he remembered everyone's name. And so I remember that being like, like going to a different movie theater and being like, oh, people don't have greeters here. Like people aren't opening the door with and greeting everyone with a smile and being like, enjoy your movie. And mm -hmm. he um, was there every single day. And it made me not want to go anywhere else because like you'd kind of look forward to seeing Al. And he was always yeah. in a suit with a bow tie. <laughs> it was so cute. And, um, and yeah, he actually, he passed away uh, recently during COVID. Oh, and the theater um, has a little Al corner and they have like beautiful portraits of him and like stories that people have written about him and like oh. how important he made the movie theater experience. Um, and I just like thinking about it now as an adult, I think there's something so special about that because like you go see movies with friends and it's such a s social thing and it like seems so like insignificant at the time. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it and, like, oh, seeing that movie 15 years ago with all of your best friends and like the fact that all of my biggest movies memories also include the greeter at Krikorian movie theater I just I always thought that that was like really special and it's like a cute little small town thing yeah wow that's awesome yeah. I yeah. I love that we we had had a fella too who was there for the longest and now I can't think of his name but he always had a kazoo and he <laughs> tore the tickets so he would be playing the kazoo and he would tear your ticket off and give you the stub and you know do -do -do, you know just do whatever like wild rendition of a song that he had that I day and I, was that. About it. I haven't seen him recently so yeah that's that's one of those things and something also i think that's kind of funny that you mentioned is movies being social i feel like that's sometimes you know kind of a thing where people are like oh i don't want to go to a movie because we're going to be you know have a bunch of friends and have that you know it's like for that hour you're quiet but you have you know that experience of all those years later kind of like you mentioned where it's like oh man remember when we went and saw this or you know, you dress up for Halloween and we're looking like an ass, you know, yeah. walking out somewhere. And um, yeah. that, I, I love that you mentioned that, too, because there's kind of like this, like, weird thing sometimes where people are like, oh, it's just antisocial and I want to be able to do this. And so, no, nah, dude, movies are Yeah, I really I think it's the complete opposite. Like, yes, for an also, you can risk being quiet for 90 minutes. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> as someone who talks a lot, it's OK. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think, like, and also being, like, it's it's the whole thing. It's, like, getting together before the movie, and then you watch the movie, and then afterwards you digest it and talk about it and 
maybe go get a drink and food. I, I don't know. I think it's like, I think it's so fun and so social. Yeah, absolutely. With within, um, you know, our interests, something I like to touch on is, is scenes in particular that may be forever ingrained in your brain. And this isn't something necessarily in horror where something happens and it's disgusting or terrifying, uh, but maybe just something that's touching or something that just the portrayal of the character. What, what are three scenes that come to mind as far as uh, that are just forever ingrained with you? Um, I feel like my answers are really stupid. Um, the dancing scene from Night's Tale I don't know. It, it cut out a second. Um, I'm sorry. I wasn't just like, oh, yeah, that's a great answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, nice. Anyway. Um, the dancing scene from A Knight's Tale. Oh, okay. I okay. don't know why. Um, that movie was extremely <laughs> influential on me. Um, I watched it over and over and over again. Uh, I would like, it would stop and then I would restart oh. it. And like, oh, it, I don't know why. Um, so that's definitely in there. Like for some reason, the dancing scene, I think it was part of my sexual awakening. I don't know. It did, it, it just <laughs> did things to oh, me. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, that's in there. Wow, I'm realizing a common thread. I was gonna say this, <laughs> the dancing scene from True Lies as well with <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. Um, that's in there, like I can, imagine everything that's happening there um the house on the beach scene from eternal sunshine oh man when, when she's saying meet me in montauk mm -hmm. um i remember watching that for the first time that's one of my favorite movies of all time and just like sobbing the whole time mm. um and i just think that the visual representation of that is so beautiful if they've got their the house is like parts of the house are disappearing and they've got like the lights it's just the solo light on certain parts of the house and them um and they're saying goodbye and she whispers mm -hmm. in his ear meet me in montauk i just remember yeah i just think that that's so cool um and then one more that traumatized me that I'll never forget is uh, American History X and the oh boy the curb something oh man so that that, that movie yeah. in general there is multiple <clears throat> moments you know people kind of mention extreme or you know like torture movies or different you mentioned American History X and that's that's a that's a tough sit <laughs> it's dark in multiple ways yeah it's dark um yeah I. I think I was like way too young when I watched that as well. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, probably the same year. Yeah. And I just remember watching that and just being like, wow, like humanity is really ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and even like the shower scene, you know, where there's oh, like yeah. that business. I, I feel like maybe that was one of the first times where I was like, that's a thing. Like this yeah. happens. Yeah. I don't know if I, I guess yeah. I'd have to think back of like when I saw that in a movie, but it was just like, oh my God, like the world became such a darker place all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's the same here. I think that was like the first time I had ever seen that. And I was like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Too far. Too now far. you said, uh, was it, it was true, true crime. That was uh, the Jamie Lee Curtis one. No, true lies. True lies. Okay. I, I've never seen it. I, I think I, I, I would have to go back and, and watch it. Oh, it's, so good. Um, okay. It's so good. It's Jimmy Lee Curtis and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh shit! Okay. Well, is, is it like a like a like an action movie or it romantic is, comedy? It's, yeah, it's an action movie. Um, I don't want to ruin it, but uh, they're just living. They're a couple, and they're living double lives of sorts. Um, oh, okay. And then everything comes to a head. And oh it's, shit! It's it's so so good. In my opinion, I think it's great. Dang. Okay, I'll have and, to go back. Like I'll, I'll check it out. Jamie Lee Curtis, in her absolute golden heyday, and this you'll notice the dancing scene that I'm talking about when you see it, and mm -hmm. it's just like it'll it'll stick in your brain too. I promise. <laughs> okay. Now, as far as uh, you know, a, a, a appreciating the art, and you know, you becoming involved in theater and different things, where you know. 
where comes, you know, as far as maybe even particular roles, um, an actor may, may be portraying a part, uh, looking into what prep that they did, maybe when you started acting yourself and looking into different, you know, ways that people were prepping, different roles uh, in, in films that maybe uh, popped in and, and just have stuck with you. Uh, you mentioned, um, oh my God, from, uh, uh, from Star Wars. Now her name's Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman, geez, you mentioned yeah. her. Uh, are there a couple others that really that, that stick out as far as their uh, portrayals or their work? Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, a lot of my answers are Natalie Portman. I'm such a huge fan of hers. Um, I Did you see Jackie recently that she did? What was it? Jackie? Uh, mm, where she was no. playing Kennedy? Oh, no. Yeah. She, um, I watched that a couple years ago, and... I was just like fa fascinated at how spot on her Jackie Kennedy was. And then um, we were able to go to uh, one of the SAG screenings with a Q&A with her afterwards. Oh, and, wow. and she was talking about the prep for that. And she said that her, um, cause like the, the voice and the cadence in which Jackie Kennedy spoke Natalie Portman doing it like sounds like a caricature of it. And she said that she sent it to the director and she was like, this is what it sounds like. Like, it, I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is what she sounds like. And she got to set and she was doing it and everyone was like, are you sure you're gonna do it like that? <laughs> like, like, ugh. And, oh, um, no. and that to me, like as an actor, that's mortifying. Yeah, like, right. You're doing so much prep, and you you feel so fucking dumb, like trying your best to make this sound as authentic as possible. Um, but she played a clip for everyone of how Jackie Kennedy actually sounded, and they were like, "Oh, that's spot on. Okay, great, let's do it." <laughs> um, oh wow! Yeah, and I just and you know she's like the best of the best. And she was talking about how she was so like self-conscious um, doing it. So I thought that was great. I think um, I also think I, I remember hearing about Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams in Blue Valentine and the prep that they did for that movie. Um, and they like lived together for a couple of months leading up to that. Um, mm -hmm to like really get acquainted with each other. And I think they were supposed to like find something to fight about at least once a day. Um, and I just remember hearing that and thinking like, you gotta really love the film that you're doing to do that. <laughs> oh my, like, that is a commitment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also incredible, like it's so incredibly dedicated and committed and, and like, to find two adult play players that are ready and willing to be like, yeah, let's like, let's do this. Yeah. Um, I think is like, that's all you could ask, ask for really. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel like Black Swan's a big one as well. That role seems very challenging. I'm sorry, this whole conversation <laughs> is just about Natalie Portman. <laughs> Um, I love, I mean, she's, she's great. She has honestly always been somebody who is, you know, time and time again, uh, at one point or another, I was going to mention Black Swan because that was, I think the point where I kind of got pushed over the edge of like, holy shit, like this woman is incredible. Just that movie in general really was, I probably saw it in theater four or five times. Uh, same. Just, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Yeah. It was absolutely wild. I remember watching Black Swan in theaters, uh, I went to go see it with my high school boyfriend's mom. And I was like, this is a great movie to watch. And it ended up being one of the most awkward <laughs> moments of my life. I like <laughs> sitting, sit at, especially at the age of like 15, I think, 14, 15, <laughs> sitting there and like this whole time I have this woman next to me. Oh my God. Awful. I, that's like the only thing I associate with seeing Black Swan in theater. <laughs> is watching Mila Kunis and Natalie Portman's sex scene with, <laughs> with my high school boyfriend's mother. Oh uh, my God. 
Yeah. Hopefully that movie wasn't the reason that that didn't end up working out. <laughs> oh my it lord! Was. She's like, actually, we broke up the day after. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you are not seeing this girl anymore. <laughs> oh my god, that is ridiculous. I I could not imagine. I mean, luckily, uh, I was always with I, I I would I think maybe a friend and then you know the girlfriends, but I was never in that situation watching that movie. And thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Dear I mean, Lord. Even watching, um, I had, this is a quick side note. Um, I had my whole, my whole family, like 20 or 30 of us, um, come and watch Christmas Bloody Christmas when it came out. And like my uncle was there, my stepdad, like, and I just hadn't thought it through. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and there, there's a very long scene in there that they didn't need to be there for. Um, oh, no. And so nothing will get more awkward than that. <laughs> oh shit! I, I mean, was there like a dinner or something that they could have gone and? You know what? I I do need to check the turkey really quick. Um, call me when it's it's done. <laughs> well, we were we were at a movie theater. Oh, oh so, man. Yeah, oh. and it, it was already too late, and like it was just it was just one of. The, and I just remember looking at my stepdad, and he was just going like this. <laughs> Oh no! Like just really inspecting the ceiling. <laughs> Looking up. Yeah. Oh, I could. I yeah. I I could, I could not. Uh, I could not imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting. Oh. I was sitting next to my fiance and my best friend, and my best friend just reached over and grabbed my hand. She was like, "It's okay." <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So there was anyway. no like advance warning into uh, any of that. It was just. Right no, there, okay. and it also yeah. just when it came up, I had the realization of like, oh, oh shit. god, oh, I didn't think about this. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, I mean, at least you know that being you know like maybe like uh, one of the first times you know you can just get that out of the way, and then from there it can be um, you know just something that's hey, there's a certain part that you know you might just want to pull your phone out and do some taxes or. Uh, balance your checkbook <laughs> yeah. and just whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's the one time I encourage speaking during the movie. Like, you guys just, like, talk about the weather or something. I don't know. <laughs> now, as far as these first times, you mentioned getting involved in theater, but, you know, with, with having, you know, the imagination and the drive, did you have friends that you made, like, home movies with or anybody with a camera to where you'd kind of run around and make stories? Or did you have projects for school that you would do something like that? Yes. Um, so, again, it was me harassing people to just join me. <laughs> um, I, I think about this now and I'm like, I feel so bad for any of my friends from school. Because <laughs> I, like, I remember um, for extra credit for things, uh, I wasn't a very good student, but I was uh, very, like, I was very friendly with all my teachers and I would always do extra credit. So that's like how I became a, an average B student. Um, and for extra credit, I would always be like, can I make a movie? Can I like, can oh, I wow. like, or like a presentation or something? And I remember in American history, when I was a sophomore in high school, for extra credit, um, I decided to create a song and sing it to the class <laughs> um, about the baby boom. And I thought it was the funniest thing ever because I put it to uh, the the beat of um, Disturbia by Rihanna, and I called it Suburbia. <laughs> and, and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And so my teacher was like, okay, <laughs> if you want. And so I did it, and I made three other friends do it with me. But I didn't, I didn't give them any roles. They just had to hum in the back. And so... It was just be me being a, a monster. I was just like, I think about it now and I'm like, that is horrific. <laughs> I said, we're going to perform in front of the class. You have no lines. Watch me. Oh, no. That's disturbing. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, it's, but at the end of the day, they, you know, they had the choice. I mean, there was the thing where if they really didn't watch it, they could have walked away. But uh, I guess I didn't know you back then. So maybe they didn't. <laughs> no, they, they liked it. They, um, luckily, yeah. they were very, very sweet about it and very supportive. And um, yeah, they, <laughs> my friend Molly Hampton, um, she still is so supportive to this day. And uh, yeah, it, it, 
that's actually so funny that even back then she was like, yeah, I'll be your backup singer. Go ahead. That's awesome. Um, awesome. And then yeah. for, um, for English class, I uh, made a movie. We made a short film about Hamlet, um, but like it was Hamlet retold. And uh, we filmed it at my local playground. And um, it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just like, for some reason, um, I, I, I would do artistic things for myself, but that usually manifested in like, um, writing or painting or drawing. And for school, I was always just like, Hey, I have to do extra credit. Like, let me, let me make a movie for you. And I think that was the first time, like, I didn't realize it until later in life, but that's now I think it's kind of fun that I was like my first thought of extra credit was like oh let me make movies um, <laughs> yeah it's so yeah. awesome yeah now like within your artistic ability and drawing and painting and different things did that transition into when you got involved with theater and doing backdrops and kind of the extra curriculars that goes into that you know yeah. initially you think about having to act and all this but then it's like you spend weekends building sets and yeah. breaking shit up. And, how, you know, how, how did that transition into that uh, as far as, you know, helping with painting or, or set building? Yeah, I love that, that part of it. I, um, Me too. Yeah, I think it's so fun. And, like, I think part of creating anything artistic when you're doing it with a group, like, the, the camaraderie that comes with it is it's part of the experience. Like, the, you know, pre-production on anything is so much fun because you're like getting to the point of like finally doing your production. Mm -hmm. And I think that like that pre-production stuff is just as memorable and just as important. Um, and I also love, love art department on any film that I do. I love talking to them about everything that they do, seeing the props that they bring in. Like, I just think that there's so much there. It's like such a, mastery that comes with that because like there's no story if you're sitting in a fucking blank room yeah you know um but yeah in theater i those were my favorite days it was always like on a like all day on a saturday um you'd come in and hang out with friends and and paint and now that i'm having this conversation i'm realizing i think i have control issues um <laughs> Because I was always like the first one to be like, I'm gonna paint this. Nobody else touched this book because I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, I love that. They 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 say that's the first step, you know, is is a, is is a realization and you know and, and kind of realizing these things, you know, whether you decide. I'm to suddenly move, very sorry to or... all of my friends. <laughs> Now, uh, how does your first work to film uh, end up coming to? I know that you'd mentioned moving to LA. Uh, where where does that come in as as far as um, the the you know trial and and kind of those first times in getting involved? Um, so I moved to LA when I was seventeen. Uh, had zero dollars, um, and <laughs> I was like a. I didn't know any, I don't know anyone that is in the film industry. I don't, like, I didn't know what to do to get started. And, um, and all I knew was that, like, doing background work, like, extra work, uh, would help me get on a set, at least. Okay. Um, because I had never been on a, a TV or film set before. So I was just like, okay, I'll, I'll do background work, I think. And I did that for a couple of years, um, to also just have an income uh, while I was in college. And I went to a theater school, which was great, but it taught me nothing about the TV and film industry. <laughs> um, oh, no. And so, I mean, I, I had such an amazing time, and I, I now have, like, mentors from there that I'll keep with me forever. But, um, yeah, like, I, I just had no fucking clue <laughs> about how to get into film. And um, so then, you know, you just, I think you learn the most when you're thrown into something. And so I started re realizing like, oh, I, I 
now finally have a SAG card from doing background work. Oh, this is how, what I need to do to get an agent. And so I spent years doing like comedy workshops and agency workshops and stuff like that. And like hearing no hundreds of times, mm -hmm. um, but being too stubborn to give up. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a part of it. You just like, you get told no a fuckload of times. And, and I think, I don't know. I think it makes the yeses a little sweeter. Sure. After all of that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, without an agent, I ended up getting um, my first film after college. And uh, it was this movie called City of Gold with um, Christopher Atkins from Blue Lagoon. Yeah, okay. And Vernon Wells from Mad Max. Yeah. And it was shot in Hawaii. And I was 20, 20, I think, 20 or 21. And I was like, oh, acting's easy. I'm in Hawaii. I'm getting paid. I'm with these guys. It's so cool. <laughs> Um, and then after that, I found out that it's not easy, uh, <laughs> and, and it takes time. Um, but that was my, that was my first role in a film. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was like the, the supporting lead. And it's funny. Cause I think, think about like my process and like my prep for that movie back when I was a child. And I think about how I would have prepped for that now. And it's so different just because like, I know so much more now. Um, but from that, I think that there's like a little sense of like, it being my first time doing that, that I had this like wide eyed wonder of how fucking cool it was. Mm -hmm. And I never want to lose that. Yeah. That's like, cause because, you know, some days on set are really, really tough and they're long and you might be working with someone that's a dick and it like it's it can be easy to slip into like, oh, my God, I just want to go home. But I think about like little 20 year old me, how fucking stoked she would be to like have this opportunity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think the the like professionalism comes with time, but the, I want to keep like the wonder of, of that movie. I don't know if that answered your question at yeah, all. No, no, absolutely. And I, I appreciate, you know, just through anybody, you know, the, the different backgrounds, uh, different personalities, you know, just whoever, you know, it is. And especially, you know, being involved in film or, or acting in particular uh, is just, the aspect of like having to be just continuous with it. You have to be really like pushing with it because there's a ton of no's and it's not, you know, something that's a prejudice to anybody uh, that everybody hears that. And then you just have to be, you know, like adamant with it and, you know, keep on yeah. go going. And um, I, I think it's just something important for, you know, younger people who are trying to get involved and possibly wanting to, you know, take that on, uh, you know, is a, is a huge thing. I mean, even somebody like Dee Wallace who has had a lifelong career, um, being yeah. able to get to talk to her and like her just being, you know, a small city girl and moving out and throwing herself in the middle of a, yeah. uh, the brand new world, you know, kind of like you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. And, it, it, and like, and you know, it's also like, I think if you know that this is for you, like if you can't do anything else, um, I'm also not qualified to do anything else. So <laughs> there's also that, <laughs> um, but, uh, but like, because there's been times where I've gotten very close to being like, this is fucking miserable. Like I worked in restaurants for years. I'd have an audition the next day. I'm like studying my lines in a wine closet in between taking care of tables. And, you know, you work until two or three in the morning and then have to go to an audition the next day. And like, that's hard. It's, it's, it's tough. And there were times where I was like, I don't know if this is worth it, but like I said, the the yeses make every no so much sweeter. And that sounds so stupid. And like, I don't know, like, yeah, it just sounds very like cliche, but I do think that it's true. And you have to just keep fucking going and like back yourself 100%.
Absolutely. Was there a time, and I don't know if this would even, even be something relatable, but, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a moment where you had had a self-realization as far as like feeling like you're out of the on the job training phase, you know, kind of that initial where you're like, OK, I'm really trying to be overly particular here. I'm trying to do this. Was there something where it was like, oh, OK, I kind of feel like I know, like how the routine goes and where I should go, how the, 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 the role of, you know, being an actor in film goes? Um, yeah, I think I think it was the first time that um, I was like the lead of anything was the I did. I did this like back when Snapchat series were a thing. Mm. Um, and they were like, this is the new frontier. We're doing short form series. Snapchat. They were they were filmed vertically, which was wild. Oh, really? Um, yeah, they shot on this camera and they had these like blinders. Any camera people that watch this are gonna be like, she's using the wrong terminology. This <laughs> To me, they looked like these like blinders that they put on this uh, camera <laughs> box. And um, I'm sorry to any camera people out there. Um, and yeah, that was my first introduction uh, to being the lead of anything. It was the Snapchat series called Kappa Crypto. And it's very like okay. quick, short form comedy mystery. And we shot that thing. I think we shot eight episodes in like, 10 days or something like that. And wow. it, was, it was so fast. It, it was like shooting a soap opera fast. Like it was just <laughs> so much. And I'm in almost every scene. And that was my first introduction to that. And I remember um, getting past that, uh, that helped me with any kind of like imposter syndrome that like, I can be the lead of things and I can handle that schedule and I can present myself with professionalism and figure it out and like work with a team and we are all capable of doing things that are crazy. And I think, um, yeah, I think that, that was the first time that like, I, I don't know. I think maybe I was a little stressed on that shoot because that was my first time actually. But I think my next job after that, that was the lesson from that shoot oh. was I was like, oh, okay. I was like, okay, we're, we're good. And then um, I did this uh, romantic comedy for Netflix um, during 2020. And yeah, I think I, I felt like, like I was like, I mean, I was stoked about every part of it because I just like, I look around a lot of the time and I'm like, this is the coolest job in the world. Like, <laughs> it's so much fun. I'm not sitting behind a desk. I get to eat food and make out with hot dudes and act. <laughs> this is great. I'm having a great time. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that like, even though... I'm very excited about it. Uh, that was the first time that I was like, I felt like I was taking care of myself and that's what, what makes it feel like, you know what you're doing. Sure. Uh, sure. I, you know, and, and through those times too, I mean, it sounds like with the, you know, with the, the Snapchat uh, uh, short there, you know, it's like kind of in your face, constantly going to where you're not even really thinking about being stressed about it, that it's just kind of all happening so fast that you're having to, you know, jump right in and then, the project that comes after you like, Oh, okay. This, this is not too bad. I, I think I uh, finally feel it. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a routine there. Yeah. And, good, and, good. and I think that that comes the more and more you work obviously as well. Like, um, cause even like Christmas, bloody Christmas, like that was my first time doing anything horror related or, you know, like, so like you learn so much from everything mm -hmm. um, and then take that to the next one. Yeah. Sure. Now, and now, I mean, touching on that, you know, obviously, uh, my introduction to your work, and, and goddamn, you did great. The movie was so, so <laughs> rad. I was, I've loved Joe's stuff since, you know, his earlier yeah. movies there, too. Uh, but as far as, uh, you know, your work on it and, and your approach, bring us back, you know, as far as, you know, the, the initial getting the script and what your read through was for the, uh, the audition. Um, so the, 
the very first time I heard about the project, uh, the name alone made me look at my manager and say, no, I'm not doing that. Because I had done three Christmas movies before that. <laughs> right. And I was like, I'm not doing Christmas anymore. Um, and she was like, Riley, just read this. I think you'll like it a lot. And um, I read it and I was like, yeah, okay. I have to audition for this. This is sick. And um, so I did a tape. Um, I know that this is controversial. Not a lot, not a lot of people like taped auditions, but I love them. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I submitted a tape and then I got a call back and the callback was on zoom. And I remember seeing the casting director, Amy Renee, who's fucking incredible. And then Joe in the other box. And it was like me and Amy, we both had like really bright boxes with our faces fully showing. Um, and then Joe, <laughs> this is my first time meeting him. Um, it was just black with like his face <laughs> just in the middle here and, and, and his beard and his hair and it was just like his hair was like this and his beard was here and it was just black behind him and I was like oh this is, this is the real deal and I was like this guy's not gonna like me <laughs> um, and I was determined to make sure that he did like me. Um, Cause as I mentioned before, I'm very stubborn. Um, and I was like, I'm going to make this guy like me. Like I'm, I am his Tory. Yeah. We're doing this. Yeah. And um, so yeah, I did the scene and we like reworked it a little bit and um, it just felt really good. Like he, I, I felt like when we met for the first time on Zoom, we had a really good shorthand already, which felt very, like, different. And, like, everything that he threw at me to change the scene, like, I understood what he meant. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like, let's do And then, um, yeah. And then I, I found out that I got it, and he and I uh, met for coffee before any contracts were signed because he, he we sat down to coffee and he was like I just wanted to make sure that you weren't a fucking weirdo <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he's and, sitting there with a black <laughs> background and fucking beard and hair showing like somehow you're the freak <laughs> yeah like freak we're just <laughs> um but uh I love yeah that. Joe like I will do anything and everything that he asks me to do. I think he's, we don't have directors like him, you know? And awesome. Um, he really, I, I just felt so close to him as soon as we started working together. And he like, I just felt like we were creating this thing together it didn't feel like I was just someone that they were bringing on like he made me feel like a part of it from the ground up and um and trusted me with anything that I brought for Tori as well um and then yeah I I would remake that movie a hundred times I like I had so much fun it was the coolest experience ever that's awesome that yeah awesome. I, I, now do you remember like what what was the scene that you had uh, done with the audition um the scene that we did was uh, when I, so obviously the script had changed a little bit by the time we shot it, but it was when I see the kid get killed next door and oh, okay. I run in and I'm telling Robbie, I'm like, yo, we got to get out of here. I got to get my sister. Da -da -da -da. Um, that was just to get like the pacing mm -hmm. of, that kind of I mean because the whole the movie is very in your face and like intense for a long time and so I think that was to get that kind of pacing and see if I could do it and then um the other one was one of the, the walk and talk scenes where we're talking we're like arguing about music and bands <laughs> um and, and I remember Joe saying that I was the only one that sounded like I knew what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> sure. Which is great, because even though, like, you know, I'm not a metal head of sorts, uh, uh -huh. but, like, my my dad is a musician, and um, 
has had many of those conversations uh, after a couple of drinks that I've like been able to hear, you know? And so yeah. I, I, I feel like I, I knew the, the energy that comes along with that. Um, and that's so important because you need to, like those scenes sell so much for Robbie and Tori at the, and like their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those were the scenes that we did. I love it. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and I mean, you know, you, you touching on to it being, uh, you know, obviously in acting, you have to take on roles and things that are very far from your character. And, you know, with it being, you know, kind of touching on old classic horror movies and metal music and, yeah. and records and such. Uh, in the record shop, was there, was there any particular, uh, I, I'm trying to think now of, there's a moment where he asks about buying a record uh, and there's a, a record picked and he's like, yo, check this one. Was there any particular like reason that record was there? Or was that just something like, grab this one and, and let's go with that? I think that there was a reason. Uh, now I'm trying, I'm kicking myself in the ass. I didn't write down what the fuck it was. Damn it. There's, I should know this. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that there's like a clearance thing. Like, I think it has to be, okay. I think you have to get certain things cleared. And I think that they like knew one of the bands. Oh, okay. Damn. I'm going to have to go back and edit and be like, oh yeah, this band and such. A oh, sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> I also wish I was cool enough to have Damn the it. answer for you. I, I forgot um, about writing it down. Son of a yeah. bitch. Well, yeah. anyway. We I, I, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's like, <clears throat> oh, maybe. It was Sal's band. I the cinematographer is in a band, um, and I think maybe one of the records was his band. Oh, sick! Brian that Sal rules. is amazing. Okay, um, all right, awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, so within uh, and, and thank you for that. That that is awesome. Yeah. And, and hopefully, <laughs> I'm going to have that. I'll have to edit in like a picture of the of the record too because yeah. that rips. I love that. Um, you know, you mentioning that character and you know and it being. Uh, you know, kind of like a stretch and, and, and pull as far as, you know, uh, attaching yourself to it. Mm -hmm. What, you know, personal, uh, personable characteristics were there as far as that you could um, you see yourself in? I know you mentioned, you know, having family and brothers, maybe the sister aspect was something that you could kind of uh, uh, feel for this character. Yeah, um, definitely like the, I, because Tori's circle is very small and, um, but like the people that are in her circle, she like loves so fiercely and will literally do anything for them. Um, and so I definitely relate to that. But um, I think like what connected me to her was that she's a lot of what I wish I was like, or like, hmm. like the version of me in the, uh, oh, this is a perfect example. This side of my face is light. This side of my face is dark. <laughs> she's like, okay. she's like this side of me, <clears throat> and um, she like, cause I I come off very like bubbly and annoying, and um, <laughs> and she is kind of like who I am like in here, <laughs> um, and so it like it wasn't it was a stretch in that like in the way that i'm perceived is very different from her but uh but i think like getting to her wasn't that hard okay. <clears throat> um and i rem remember like after we were done filming my i'm very close with i have four nieces i'm obsessed with all of them um but my oldest niece delaney she's 13 um after i was filming she was like you really cuss a lot <laughs> <laughs> like you really cuss a lot um and i thought that that was funny but she yeah tori she's just like she doesn't give a fuck who <laughs> agrees with her or who doesn't agree with her but like she's gonna tell you her opinion anyway yeah. um and i really try to be like that more and more um because I have opinions, there's just times when I choose not to share them. Um, and, and yeah, I think I'm, I'm trying to get better at just like not caring what people think. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think that was kind of my way to get into her was being like, you know, this is my opportunity to like actually get to act, act like this. Because yeah. um, I feel like in my life, this is not acceptable. <laughs> um, so yeah. 
Well, and, and I, I love, I think, you know, <clears throat> Joe's work as far as uh, the effort in, in writing, you know, an effective female and it not just being somebody that comes into the script to be kind of like the weak point or kind of the, the balance of like, you know, really pushing forward the male character to do you know, yeah. his part. Like this movie, Bliss, VFW, uh, you know, all, all the movies have that, you know, to where I, I think something I heard you'd mention as far as like, Joe, you know, really put himself in the in the the role of Tori, but then both of you guys kind of went back and forth talking about little bits of yourselves that you would put into into this character. What what were some of those parts that you would put into that you mentioned uh, as far as uh, within this character? <laughs> it's so funny, and maybe even his too. Yeah, it it's funny because like it's become kind of a joke how like Joe only writes himself as a female, um, and I really love that. I think it's, it's sick. I think it's so refreshing and great. And like, I think a lot of us can relate to that because I think there, I don't know. I just, I just don't know why people don't think to do that more. I think it's so smart. Um, and yeah, I remember Dora saying that when she filmed Bliss with him, they like became the same person. And that I remember hearing that before filming and being like, I don't know about that. But okay. <laughs> and then I and then I understood what she said, and yeah. I was like, oh, I totally get it because like, I mean, their story is so much different. Like Bliss is obviously very different. Like I think the journey that she goes on, I can see how they became completely like mm -hmm. intertwined, um, and that really lent itself to their story. Mm -hmm. uh, and for Christmas, Bloody Christmas, like, I was just so thankful because I felt like Joe and I, maybe we didn't become intertwined, but we became like this. <laughs> we, like, sure. we became, uh, like, I understood him so much, which made me understand Tori so much. And um, we made a playlist uh, before filming. Music helps me so much. I, like, I make a playlist and, like, a Pinterest aesthetic board for every character that I play and it just helps me get into like the vibe and the feel and um the playlist I <laughs> I remember before Joe sent me his playlist I sent him the playlist I made for Tori and he was like yeah that's cute here's mine <laughs> um, and it was it had like so many more songs than I, I had put on um, and his was a little more <laughs> hardcore uh, but I think yeah he, he was so he wasn't like um, he didn't have like a, a firm grasp on toy as far as like not wanting to change at all like he, he released it and like allowed me to mold her into my version of that okay um and I think, I really do think that um, I added a lot of the, like, Joe hates this, but he wrote a rom-com. Yeah. I, it's I a mean, rom -com. kind of. Yeah, I, I, I see it for sure. Like, you know, when you look past all of the, the blood and the, the horror yeah. aspect, uh, it's totally there. I, I, yeah. And I, I kind of love it for that, honestly. Like, it makes me, like, smile that much more yeah. toward it like yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's cute on top of being scary yeah <laughs> i think it's great and you're like you're really rooting for them to have sex and like you really like you want it to finally happen except for your and, step like, dad except for my, not, my not. step dad <laughs> he was not rooting for that he was rooting for the opposite in fact rooting um, for the architecture i'm sorry yeah i, I, I should have interrupted he was he was very excited when robbie died yeah. um but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you're you're totally rooting for them and so I think that like I just because my background before this is like I've just done a lot of romantic comedies and so I think that like he was he was very much open to me like lent like I guess like flourishing on that sure sure um and then yeah I think that it's a nice difference with her because like it shows just like that added rom-com aspect i think it's nice because it shows that like you you can be a bad bitch 
but you can also have a crush on someone and like not know what to do with your hands when you talk to them, <laughs> you know? Um, it's so real. Both of those things can exist. <laughs> uh, and That's great. Yeah, and I think that it makes it so much more heartbreaking when he does die because it's like she finally let him in, mm -hmm. literally and figuratively. Um, <laughs> and I think it's it's so sad because it's just like it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, yeah, it's tough. And I have you have you heard the story about Joe adding dialogue on the day? So. There was, uh, I don't know if it was like an interview with him or if, if it was maybe something with you mentioning um, there was a longer scene that ended up, he wrote like a new dialogue on the back of the pages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was, um, that was the, uh, yeah, th that just made me think of it. Um, was that okay. of like what we brought to certain things or certain scenes. Um, Cause you know, you prepare and uh, Sam and I, who plays Robbie, um, who I adore and will love until the end of time, um, you know, we're, we're like rehearsing and chatting and doing this. And that just all goes out the window. <laughs> Joe comes up like 45 minutes before we start shooting and he's like, hey, you guys have some new dialogue. And it's like four or five pages of his like really hard to decipher handwriting. Um, full of, yeah. like these very niche <laughs> references. And uh, so we're like YouTubing what these references are just so that we know what we're talking about. And we're just like, okay, yeah, we're, okay, great. Um, and so <laughs> that was like something that Joe, that Joe would add that wouldn't give us any time to like, it felt like an acting boot camp. It was just like, okay, we're doing this and we're just gonna see how it goes. And those are some of my favorite scenes of the movie. Absolutely, and you know, and one of those things too, I think after, you know, researching and looking more into your work was your mention with, with being in theater and then a moment like that popping up, that's very in the moment, you know, kind of sporadic theater type shit where it's like, yo, uh, this was not prepared at all. You're going to have maybe literal seconds to get your ass out there and do what you have to do. Uh, yeah. And I loved hearing that. I love that story. But then, you know, hearing that too, I, I kind of wondered if that was something that like, it gave you a different energy into the film of like, oh, this is like my moment. Like I have to like, you know, I have to really push at this part. Yeah, I, I also felt like I became like mother hen as well. Because uh, Sam and I were both, I feel like we both looked at each other and we were like, rut row. <laughs> it was like, whoa. And um, we were trying to just like stay calm. And I became very, I was like, Sam, this is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> like, I was Man. like, and we were very stressed for no reason because it, it came to it. Went great. And that, that's, and that's the thing too, is like Joe is never stressed ever he yeah. even when shit's hitting the fan i'm always like joe how are you keeping your cool right now and he's like i'm making movies with my friends yeah dude it, yeah it's i mean good. it seems easy to get lost into that but i certainly you know like tip the hat to anybody that can actually maintain a cool head through some of those things because even like something you know and we're going to kind of move into working with russell effects uh, and working with them and having practical effects on a film. Uh, what were some of the things, you know, working on this that really, you know, like introduced you to kind of some holy shit moments into seeing some awesome things <laughs> right in front of you? Yeah, uh, I feel like, I feel like the whole t almost two months of filming was me just going, whoa, what's that? Whoa, what's that? Like, it was, it was just like, because it was just like a completely new world to me. Yeah. And, um, Sierra and Josh are engineers. Like they are Amazing. incredible. And um, they also work with this incredible human named Kat Calico, um, oh, yeah. who did my my hair and makeup and everything else under the sun that they needed. Like it, they're such an incredible little threesome team. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I remember like, even before we started filming, I had to go and get my, my arm cast for my fingers. Um, 
And I was so excited to do that because I have so many other actor friends that have gotten casts of themselves done before and I had never done that. And um, that was so cool to see this like weird silicone like version of my arm. Um, and yeah, like all of the dummies that were just burnt and torched and absolutely ravaged. And then uh, Joe's character's head getting split in half. <laughs> and, like, on top of all of this, they're also building a fucking robot. <laughs> and, like, I thought my job was hard having to, like, a act with the robot. They're making it. Like, they're the day of. Like, And, you know, that's the thing as well is, like, everyone, it makes it easier for everyone to keep their cool because, like, this robot, because it is a real robot at this point, like, it's going to malfunction at some point. And so the more chill everyone else is, it leaves more room for when things like that happen to take care of it. Um, and, yeah, the Russells are just incredible. They, like, Joe would ask them to do psycho things, like, a couple hours before. And Sierra would just be like, never done that, Joe. But but we'll we'll do it. We'll figure that out. And they they do. It's like it's incredible. Um, it's insane. Yeah, I'm fascinated by them. I just think they're the coolest. I, their workshop that they have is amazing. I remember when I first met them, going and getting my arm cast there, and you're just looking at all of these fake dead bodies and cadavers and you're just like <laughs> it's incredible and it was so fun because I was just like I just really want to do more horror now <laughs> Dude, it's, it's no such way. a cool community and everyone's so in it and like horror fans are so in it and so supportive and so welcoming mm -hmm. and everyone that works on horror films are just fucking in it Everyone's trying so hard to make this thing work. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it's so cool. I, I had the, the absolute privilege of being able to interview them, uh, I don't know, years ago now. Uh, and they had kind of done like a little mini tour of their show. Oh. It's just like, God damn. It's so like, cool. How do you have all this stuff, man? Like it's, it's, and then making it too. Like that's a whole other part. But, uh, you know, on that subject, did you get to keep any souvenir or anything from the shooting <laughs> on this? Yeah, I took a lot. Um, oh, shit. I took a awesome. Lot. Yeah. I um, I try to keep something from everything that I do. Mm. Uh, for this one, though, I was like, I'll take this. I'll keep that. This is mine, too, now. Um, and I, I have Tori's shirt, her death shirt. Oh, uh, dang. Yeah, I, I still wear that. I have Tori's flannel with all the patches on it. Sick. Um, I don't really wear that out in public, uh, but I like that I have it. Um, I took a bunch of Christmas ornaments from the neighbor's tree. <laughs> um, and it's fun because some of the ornaments are splattered in blood. Oh, um, oh dang. So, yeah, because it's right where the little kid gets um, killed. And so <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's man. like technically the little kid's blood. Little kid's blood. Um, and I... I'm a big texture person. I kept some of the rubber glass. <laughs> I it's like uh, I have like a little bag of rubber glass that I enjoy feeling. It's just <laughs> like a, a stress reliever. Um, and I think I took something else. Oh, some records. Oh, okay. So yeah, just from cover art from somebody um, introducing you to. No, I. Uh, from Tori's record store, because I, I really wanted to take something from the record store, because that was, like, my safe place, mm -hmm. I feel. Mm -hmm. um, I felt very attached to that store. And uh, before this, the final scene where everything's getting soaked, mm -hmm. um, they were like, Riley, art department was like, like if you want to take something, take it now, because it's going to get wet. Um, <clears throat> so... I looked through boxes and boxes of records and um, all of 
them I had never heard of before because I think they were records that like people didn't mind getting wet. Oh, um, okay. So none of them were great, but I uh, I took some some hi-fi jazz records from the oh. 1920s. It's like it's like a like big band swing jazz. Sick. Um, so nice. I have like three of those records, and I put them on whenever we have people over for dinner. Awesome. And awesome. I also got a tattoo of the um, neon sign in Tori's <laughs> shop. Oh dang! Yeah, that is sick. Yeah, That's awesome. Um, one what? of my best oh, friends, uh, Sarah, she is on the art department, and she um, did all the neon signs. And so, I Whoa. I FaceTimed her when I got that tattooed, and she was like, "What? That's crazy!" So um, sick. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where was the record shop? I, I guess speaking of that, and the filming and, and location. Yeah. So everything was on the same street. Uh, we filmed in Placerville, California, uh, which is like near San Francisco mm. or Sacramento. Uh, it's up there. It's it's somewhere up there. I don't um, know, but they sound like they're close together. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, somewhere. Yeah. yeah, somewhere in Northern California. Uh, very cold. And um, yeah, it was, the town was kind of perfect. There's like, everyone was staying at this hotel that was on the main street and um someone said didn't <laughs> didn't the town think someone was rob zombie yeah it was rob zombie <laughs> <laughs> excuse me um yes there were many rumors floating around uh yeah <laughs> people were like oh they're shooting a porno oh it's rob zombie um yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah we were all staying i felt so bad for everyone staying in this hotel we were filming on the main street overnights. All of our shoots were from 6 p.m. to 8 in the morning. Oh, for, oh man. For almost two months. And you have me screaming my fucking head off, <laughs> driving this ambulance down this street with like fake snow machines that are like, like really loud <laughs> and things blowing up and crashing. And there were like actual tourists staying in this hotel. And. <laughs> My my fiance was staying there as well, and I was like, "Can you hear us at night when we're filming?" And he's like, "Yes, I can hear everything." <laughs> um, so I feel so bad for anyone that was there during that time. Um, and yeah, there's a anyway. Sorry to answer your question. The record store was on that street, um, and it was this abandoned building, and it's like this two story building, and so we actually um the bar scene where jeff daniels phillips character walks in for the first time and our producer josh is playing the bartender um that was actually upstairs from the record store so they had oh, like oh, dang, yeah dang. they had like a little bar <laughs> set up upstairs and then we had our production office next to that and then record store was down below Sick. um and they had local artists come and um do like that one big like graffiti wall. Yeah, okay. Um and I really think that they should have left it like that and actually made a record store, but I think they turned it into like a coat store or something. Oh no. Yeah. That sucks, man. Yeah. Cause it was beautiful. I like that that place was so incredible. Yeah. Our art team on that was the best. God, I, I, yeah, and, and and you hear those things too, and I mean, I can only imagine because it's completely different spending time and actually, you know, being involved in these things. But even as a fan, you know, you're like, God, why didn't they just leave that alone? Why didn't they just yeah. leave that be? Well, and I think like it would have made it so cool because um, we filmed it at T.W. Bonkers Toy Store, which is an actual place in Placerville. Oh, really? And yeah, the toy store actually exists. Oh shit! Wow, and I've so, never heard of it. Yeah. I thought it was made up. <laughs> and, no, it's it's real. And um, the owner of the toy store was incredible, and he's been like such a champion of the movie since the beginning. Um, and he was so sweet. We, we would film there overnight, and he'd be like, "You guys can have like whatever candy you want." And um, actually, Sam and I have stuffed animals from T.W. Buckers, wow. so we also have that. Um, awesome. I have like a little rainbow bunny uh stuff, stuff. <laughs> um and sam has a green dinosaur 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we actually filmed there and I just thought that that'd be so cool for people that are fans of the movie to come and you can actually see TW Bonkers and if the record store was actually there, that'd be sick. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Man, that, I mean, that's, that's so cool though that that shop, the uh, toy store is there. Yeah. Um, especially like, you know, cause you kind of mentioned within like the horror community and things, one of the bigger things for probably the last like five or maybe, I don't know, I wouldn't say 10 years, but people are really into seeing like physical locations and shoots and where things have actually yeah. been done. Uh, and I mean, even go into that, that toy shop, like that's kind of like a thing that puts it on my list now, as far as, you know, spots to go and see, cause that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. Radical. And he, um, and he, I think actually still has the, um, the setup and like the Santa chair that oh, like Dora oh, and Jonah man. have their whole scene sure. on. Um, <laughs> and so he got to keep that chair. And so I think like around Christmas time, he'll put that up again. And like, it's <laughs> like a thing. That's <laughs> like, awesome. it's rad, but like it being a toy store and like what happened, kind of makes it a little weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> when you think of it weird. you know you're well, like and i think <laughs> i think like maybe maybe they'll plan on having like an actual santa claus like come and be there yeah. so it's kind of funny because it's like it stems from something a little sinister but yeah. that's like our secret you know like yeah <laughs> people, that, that is, that is people that don't know they will never know and he also said actually the owner of the toy store said that there's still like spatters of blood on the ceiling that he can't get to <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome oh my god yeah. dear lord yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and it was, well, and I... like sorry no no no. go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say with filming there it was really fun because um there was only one bar on the whole street and um so like every single weekend we'd it's called the liars bench and um, yeah. I don't know why I said it in a Southern accent, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's, it's called the Liar's Bench. And like the entire town by the end of the shoot, like was very aware, aware that we were filming. And so like everyone would kind of like convene at this bar. Um, Sick. Yeah, it was a really fun experience. I like, I miss it every day of my life. <laughs> Man. I mean, shout out to the small town experience, you know, and just having, you know, a community that's uh, welcoming or maybe not welcoming and they just didn't have the choice, you know, they yeah. just had to put up yeah. with it for a minute. <laughs> yeah, most of, most of the people were really lovely. There were that's some awesome. people that by the end of it, they were like, get the fuck out of our town. <laughs> um, but it was, it was more so met with like people that were stoked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I have to ask one last thing here. You know, what, was the death shirt, was that another, you know, story of that being a, a, a Joe's uh, a shirt out of his collection? Or was that something that was actually purchased for uh, the movie? Um, the death shirt? Yeah. I think, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I think, um, I think it was bought. Oh, okay. But the, okay. but the um, cause they had to buy a bunch of like, versions of it because i get so bloody right. like i'm <laughs> that entire movie i am just saturated yeah. um and so yeah we had like i don't know five or six of those and by the end of filming i like have to put some of them on that already had the blood on it and it's okay. just like crispy <laughs> so you're like trying to like slide into this shirt and it's just like this cold crispy blood um, <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, Rachel, our wardrobe stylist, was incredible and had like tons of copies for everything. And yeah. she also yeah. had a, um, a wetsuit for me to go underneath all my clothes during the final battle scene because uh, the water that was coming out was super cold. Um, oh, no. And we did like a 10 hour shoot day. Oh, no, that was our longest shoot day. That was the last day of shooting. And I think we went for hours. We went for a really long time. And we had to yes. go until the sun came up to get the final shot of the movie of me laying on the ground laughing. Um, that was actually after filming the entire final sequence. Oh. And, oh, and then we were like, oh, the sun's coming up. Everybody run outside, grab that shot. And then we had to run back inside, block up the windows to finish filming the battle. <laughs> oh, no. uh, um, 
God. Yeah. And, and that, that was really sick because that was like, it felt like such a literal climax for everyone because we were filming the last scene on the last day of shooting after this like mammoth of a schedule. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, the death shirt was purchased, the flannels were purchased, but the jean jacket that Tori wears is Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It seems like somehow, you know, there's always like a passing along. I know the death shirt uh, for Dora, or yes. not the death shirt, geez, the, uh, the death waltz uh, yes, shirt yes, yes. Was, was his as well. Yeah. So that's funny. I, he, you know, kind of embodies himself physically and, you know, emotionally in the, in the script there. I, I, can, yeah. I can dig that. <laughs> yeah. And he, he was like, um, he was like, make sure you give me this denim jacket back. And because uh, <laughs> I, I think in the past he's had some things taken from him and so i was like i would always give him a hard time um i was like oh i can't wait to wear this jacket out and he was like riley i'm not kidding give me that jacket like he <laughs> wouldn't even joke about it he's like i want that jacket back oh um, my god it's awesome yeah so fun <laughs> and well, i just want to add one thing about joe as well sure. um he during that last scene um he refused to film the battle scene uh and not, not get wet and cold like i was because he was like everyone was offering him like ponchos for the water coming down um anything like that because he was operating the camera at the time and um he was, he was like nope if riley's freezing i'm gonna freeze Damn. and so Damn. yeah and so like we were both so like hyped on adrenaline and it was freezing and like we just kept like looking at each other and being like, this is so fun. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and when we were done, we were just, just hugged each other and we were just like soaking wet and cold. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the best. It's <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. I mean, all in all, honestly, it sounds like it was incredible. Uh, I truly, I love this movie. I'm waiting for it to come. Uh, I think it was through Amazon. I had to order it uh, yeah. and to, to get the Blu-ray copy of it. And I'm, I'm super psyched. Uh, this has been so fun. This has been so awesome uh, hearing everything and all the stories. Uh, I, I graciously uh, thank you so much for yeah, uh, the course. time today. This has been awesome, Riley. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. This Anybody fun. who tuned in a little bit late, this will be on YouTube. I'll have it edited and on there, and uh, I'll get that promoted. So it's another episode of Growing On You Live. Thank you so much, Riley. Thanks. <laughs> Take care. Bye. So lo-fi, lo-fi, a whole little guy, yeah, lo-fi horror guy has been recorded in front of a live studio audience.